I really like this number. Like, uh, if you open dupes, if you can get uh, soft rocks, and I really, really like making the totally awesome. And then on their turn, summoning the dupe frog, so they're forced to run it over before they're able to run over the toad. And then if they run it over, and you just get soft rocks, you just more part advantage. And especially in like mirror match, lets you summon your totems from your, your grave. Uh, you know, then uh, the other monsters I played, I played uh, two backjack. Uh, these are really important. I made, I played them for anything except for Heliozoics. It's really good grave manipulation. And there's a card I combo with it to basically make it a, 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 a better jar of creed. And also let's manipulate your deck and you know, activate traps from your top of your deck. And I play two maxis. Uh, I really like the interaction with it being level two and being able to summon a trap and then summon this when like they have nothing to actually special summon. And then you overlay into the open it. Uh, other than that, especially if you're matched, you can make wonky plays where they'll they have a bunch of plays in your in their grave and you activate a trap. They'll summon a play zone and then you chain another trap and summon a play zone. And then you basically try and get the chains as high as possible to and then chain max C on the last one when you draw four. And you know, I, mean, I really like it against pretty much all of the, the meta decks currently. Uh, for spells, I played Spot Desires. I didn't like playing three, because if you open two, then like it's a really big tempo loss for you. That's pretty much one card you can't activate on your first turn. I really want my second turn to have all my cards live, if not all my cards live on turn one, just to be able to set or activate. Just because you're inherently, uh, you know, at a disadvantage where if you don't open frogs, you're uh, you gotta wait a full turn before you can make any plays. So I don't like playing three because if you draw two, like it's a full two cards out uh, until your second turn. Then uh, for the traps, Billy Zokes. Uh, I play three of the Book of Moon. He's just really good. Three of the Dust Tornadoes, Space Typhoon. He's really good as well. Three of the Karma Cut. It's just you know, these are the spot removal. And then uh, I play. Uh, the one I like the least in the deck, but I, I believe this to be a, a necess necessity to, for the mirror match. I actually don't like playing this card against anything but the mirror match, but it's just it's too good in the mirror match to not play. So I had to, I was actually originally playing Shape Sisters, and I really like that version because it lets you activate Shape Sister or one card into Nopobinia. And you know, if they have a strike or whatever, you can get a strike for one card. And if you don't have a strike, well, then you got a one card Opabinia, and then you detach and just pretty much try and go off from there. But you know, since this is uh, really good in the mirror match, I had to fit these in and play a different engine than that. And then lastly, I only play two Pika. Uh, I don't like really opening up this because it's a card that doesn't actually do anything on your first turn or their first turn. And if you open up like two of these, then like if you if you want to try and like, get their effects off, then you have to have you have to hold two cards in hand. And so of your initial five card hands, you have one, two, two cards you're holding for them, and then one card set, if it's even a trap. And if it's not, then, you know, you're holding two cards that are just going to get, you know, you could potentially get you blown out, is what I'm saying. Like, and I really don't like that. So I, that's why I cut it down to two. I was originally just playing one in my old version, but I, I upped it just so I could uh, potentially see it a little, little more. And uh, this one, I can go back and forth with shifting one. Yeah, I, you don't need this, like, especially if playing this. This fills your grave up quick enough. Uh, but pretty much just playing two in case you did a banish one with desire, so you can get the second one off of And then uh, the rest of the traps, play uh, three Reckless Creed. Uh, resolving, I'm pretty sure when I resolve this, I have won every single one of my games. When I, sorry, when I resolve it on my turn. You resolve it on your opponent's turn, it puts you actually really far behind. You, and in a lot of situations, you it may actually be more correct to just let them Typhoon it if they pop it on, your, on their turn. Because you're effectively not even getting any card advantage for any turns. Uh, and then the turn after, you're actually negating if you activate it on their turn. So you always want to activate it on your turn if possible. Then uh, I play two Fiend Fiends to combo with the, the Backjacks. It kind of activates as a, a better Jar of Greed, the, the combo. It allows you to do some you know, pseudo manipulation of the grave. Like, uh, it, it's kind of relevant against ABCs, specifically. You can put back uh, an important piece that they're, you know, they only have one of. And then you can set your draw for the next turn. And if you want to activate that trap on that turn, 
sort of like uh, Jar of Greed, you put it, put it into play and you can activate it right away. So it's just like a, an instant speed, uh, or allows you an instant speed to trap on top of your deck, sort of like Jar of Greed. And, you know, deck manipulation, which is, you know, it's a, a rarity in Yu Gi Oh! Uh, then we have the rest of the engine with uh, Meryl, Morella. Uh, spiritual source of revealing light and breakthrough skill. Breakthrough skill is just kind of like you know, it, it gives value to Meryl, Morella, so that way you can get an effect negation on your turn. Uh, most notably, uh, uh, side deck you can shotgun this or Morella into this in the grave, and then you have something to out Dinko. And then this is just for situations where you know you open up Morellas and uh, Pikas, and you know they just go balls to the wall and try and kill you. At least you can you know not die that turn by setting this with Morella, and then you know, they can't attack that turn. And it's even not even that bad if you draw into it. You can uh, flip it on your turn to summon a uh, plays out from grave. And the effect is once per attack, you can uh, pay 1,000 life points to negate the attack. So it's somewhat relevant to protect your monsters. Then uh, play three Wobble Cube. This basically lets you summon a monster and protect your entire field of monsters. It is generally pretty hard this format to blow up with monsters without effects. So if they have run over your Paleozoics, uh, sorry, running over your Paleozoics is just generally uh, the more common way to actually kill them. Uh, unless they actually draw a or something like that. And then lastly, uh, three strike and warning. These things are super important. The mirror match. Uh, Near match, metaphors, and ABC. It's like no to your ABC dragon, no to your pendulum, and no to any type of established board with Kelly Zones. So like usually mirror match, you can you know if you're trying to set up your board a little bit, you can let them have a few monsters as long as like you're holding a strike. So that way you can you know stop their their toad that they're making. Uh, I would try and refrain from summoning monsters unless like you have like a really good tempo swing where you have monsters and you know, they don't basically mirror match you're trying to hold out for the frog as long as possible and so refrain from using any traps unless like it's like absolutely necessary like you walk and whatnot. Uh, mirror match I actually side out all of my non paleo traps except for Wobble Coos, uh Solemn Brigade and uh, one breakthrough skill. I set out all the other traps and ab absolute thing just because like I, I want to keep a, it a minimum of traps that I'm using that aren't Kelly's Oaks. So that way, whenever they activate a trap, uh, I will always have something to summon. And like obviously, the rest of the cards I cited are just uh, things that are strong in the mirror match. Uh, for extra deck. Uh, Play three toads. Uh, I think it's absolutely necessary to play the frog engine. If you actually make turn one toad and they stumble and don't do anything, you can actually summon two two more toads on the next turn and just, just push the push them in. Uh, three opabinia, which uh, in testing with my shape sister version, uh, I felt it absolutely necessary to make opabinia uh, at three. Just because, like, you'd go Shape Sister, summon uh, Pelizo, make this, and you'd be bidding out strikes. Whereas this version, you're more so bidding out strikes with uh, the Toad and getting more advantage. So this is uh, probably a candidate that you can cut to two. But right now, I have it at three. And I, I never needed more than actually. No, I, I needed two once. I never needed three. Times. Then I play two normal cars. He's just uh, he breaks boards. I. Don't think I, I made it two once, but I didn't need to make the second one. It, it's just uh, it breaks boards and you get a lot of card advantage out of this. Uh, then the three other rank twos that are really important outs is things monsters that can't be targeted, uh, problematic cards like Jinzo and or Decree, and then just, you know make your uh, your Toad double its attack to run big things. And then the last X Y Z F zero. The normal play is uh, make Opabina. Make Toad, make Cat Shark, double Toad, and then overlay Cat Shark with Opabina into this. Take Monster, and uh, attack for 44 and whatever monster you take. It's also out, you know, super problematic for it. And then uh, ABC Buster Dragon, uh, I side cherries. And I only side cherries for a mirror match in this. I didn't feel like I needed for anything else. And then lastly, Pastor uh, and Pearl Dragon. Catastrophe more so if I had a cherries after game one and they dimensional barrier me, I can at least you know sink into it. And you know it, it's a card that you know if you don't have it like a direct out to it, it, it can be sort of problematic to deal with. Uh, it was my rank five choice. And then Coral Dragon was for specifically flying sea. 
if someone flying seed me, which you can only flying seed on the frog summons, you can't flying seed on a Paleozoic, so, uh, you can summon the, the cherries and sink into this. And he's pretty good. He has two card advantage. He can pop some. And then side deck, I play uh, two Gamma Seals for Toads, Buster Dragon, and what was the last one? Uh, Dark Law. Uh, Darkle, Regeki for Mirror Match, and uh, just basically side deck stuff where I think they were going to side up the tank over Shinzo. Cherries for people playing the Toad and uh, ABC Dragon. Pot of uh, Acquisitiveness for anyone that I believe is playing uh, Cherries and or Mirror Match. Uh, and Test Mouth Rank solely for any Pendulum decks, most notably uh, Maples. Uh, Chaos Hunter for ABCs. Uh, it wasn't relevant today, I didn't draw it. And then my uh, Secret Tech for Mirror Match. Two Soul Release. I really like this card for Mirror Match. Uh, I blew out two people with it today. Basically, the idea is both players will usually get into a uh, stalemate where no one wants to activate traps and you'll have, both have a bunch of traps in your graveyard. And that just kind of forces the situation. And if they don't actually have more than five, and like you can also banish Rogue Tones with this, uh, they can try and save their monsters, but if you have five Paleo's Oaks in your grave, you can stun every single one of them, and then just completely clear the grave out. And then you're free to basically summon your monster through your traps. Uh, I wouldn't recommend citing this in, for any other deck against Paleo's Oaks, because uh, you know, ABCs, they try and still release Paleo's Oaks, they can actually just chain all the traps and summon them all, and you know, this, It'll still banish everything else, but you know, it doesn't do the job well enough. And then lastly, specifically for the mirror match, uh, Lullaby uh, of Obedience. Basically just cost Swap Frog. Swap Frog is super important in the mirror match. Uh, important enough to you know, pay 2,000 life points and take it. And so if they don't actually open it, that's one less Swap Frog for them to open. If they put it in your hand, you can like, discard uh, you know, a water monster, summon it, summon a send rodent toad, and just make you no know, toad. It, it's really important. I, I only cited this uh, going first. The mirror match. And overall, the deck performed really, really well today. The, I, I probably wouldn't even cut anything from this. Uh, if Pays Oaks are on the, 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 on the decline of actually people playing them, I would probably cut the Merrill engine for my Shape Sisters. But with the turnout today, there was a lot of people playing Pays Oaks. Like, I'll probably have to keep the list uh, identical to this for now. But like, mirror match, it was. I lost one actual game up until the last round, and that was only to uh, my own misplay. And then we ended up drawing in that match. I, I just beat him in time. And then uh, I go to the last round, I ended up losing the ABCs uh, in the last round of Swiss. He opened up really, really well. I kind of opened up kind of poor, and he had a vanity emptiness, and then Game Fairy opened up double dupe, triple dupe, and rode in Toad, and I just couldn't do anything. But uh, overall, the deck performed exceptionally well, and I am very confident with, uh, with this list. Uh, uh, on the note, that uh, concludes this. Thank you. Was there any um, decks, like I know you just mentioned that what you uh, played against, yeah. were there any decks that were more difficult, in your opinion, like uh, magic-wise, or was it all was it all main deck um, and side deck ready? Um, I didn't necessarily have a side deck for my top four match. I ended up losing the heroes in the last round, but it, it was more of a... I, I don't want to say I lost specifically like to not knowing information. I, I still probably would have lost that match, but the game would have gone on for a lot longer. Uh, I, I played against heroes, he uh, not drew me game one, and then game two I not drew him. And then game three, I didn't know he was playing Forbidden Lances and he was able to get through it. But other than that, the matches were, you know, like, I, I love this against Metaphos, ABCs, Burning Abyss. Uh, in, in testing, the only match I had our time with was my original version against the mirror match. And, like, ABCs, I generally, like, uh, my friends, he takes maybe a game off me in 10, which I, I, I love those odds. Like, they have to open up the nuts, and, they, and after the nuts, they have to open up Disruption. And it gets to the point where uh, I feel that meta, or unless ABCs open like double twin twister, they're forced to leave the Buster Dragon on board, uh, even to fear the Gamma Seal. To otherwise, like they don't have enough interaction to stop the deck. And like if I open up the Gamma Seal, then they're, they're, it ruins the day. All right, thank you, Dalton. Congratulations on your top eight. Thank you. And yeah, thank you guys. If you guys like this video, please click the like button. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Ralph from Chef Metagame, thank you.